those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. Hi now. Okay, right, um, I'm gonna actually if I've got the time now to start building my pup for tea as they call it. Uh, I got it out of the box today uh, and I'm, like I said on Facebook a while back, I'm gonna try and video this uh, stage by stage as I do it in real time. So some of the videos could be long but like my lad said that he knows how to do all this doctoring on it once they're all done and finished he can put them all together in proper like the film I suppose as he put it so I'll leave that up to him at the time so uh, I thought well I'm gonna make a start on it got it out of the box here's the plan uh, and then for no fault of the chap that sold me the plane I might add because he, he didn't know and I've known him for years so uh, I found some major parts missing out of the kit i.e. the front firewall uh, and a few other formers the second mainly this the front firewall is missing and the second, for, uh, second and third formers are missing so it uh, gives you a rough idea so I could break around that so when I get to doing that I'll come to that so these things often happen but most of it's there and then before you even make any well I'm talking as a personal issue before you make any start on the plan watch the weather you get out of the box all the bits and wood as you can see I've managed to do most of it now and because I'm a bit green at times I uh, you have to ascertain what all the bits are for. Uh, the other thing it was missing from this plan, which was a major issue, is because this is what we call a half a plan. Uh, it's a very basic layout uh, because you usually get a booklet of instructions with it that gives you a, the main idea of what they want you to do stage by stage, which unfortunately is not in this kit either. <laughs> so uh, that's a bit of a challenge. So anyway, you ascertain what bits of wood as best as possible are going to be doing what on the kit i.e. these are going to be the capping strips over the ribs yeah you can gain most of that from looking at the plans because it does give you a main like six millimeter dowels and stuff so you've got a rough idea mainly the instructions for when you want to put in things like plates and where they go if you're new to it and you haven't never done one of these before then the instructions we really are a must to be fair because they do help with the flare kits in a way but anyway as we build it uh, we'll go through major bits like that pretending that the instructions are there if you know what I mean so that's basically it for now I've managed to do most of it it's all there all kitted out ready to go certain parts I haven't marked off certain parts because I know what they are um, the other good tip as well I might add which I'd say is a very good tip is once you've got all your wing ribs like you have I, uh, I always keep the outer sections of them because this ply does actually come in handy for different bits and pieces if you need it I'm just a bit tight like that and also the other thing what I can't stress uh, m as much as possible is each bit you get like these ribs take make a template of everything like you need in future reference ie for example the wings ribs make one template they're all the same so make one template of them and mark down what it's made of like this would be I believe this is like 1.5 mil ply and mark it down on a big a notepad so in future if you crash your plane or you decide you want to make another one uh, if you sell it on a whatever reason you've got all the listings there uh, especially for stuff like for this kit they give you the free cut front fuselage main side panels so I would strongly suggest that you but again mark it down that's 5mm uh, five mil uh, balsa and make a template of one of, of the top and bottoms so you've got the wing out cut and everything else that's meant to be there because you can, on the plan it's not definitely showing on it if you know what I mean it's just dotted dash because it's already been cut for you so that's things like that you need to do and as I go along I'll, I'll keep reminding people because there is, it is a necessity to be honest uh, if you really, really want it and I, I believe these kits are no longer being made uh, so they're few and far between uh, so for now that's about all I can think of at the moment um, as I go along to the next stage like I say this is all going to be in real time so if that's the word you use uh, and that's basically what I'm going to do so this will be the one and only one I'll probably do like this because it's can't be vomiting and it's a long thing <laughs> jelly okay right for now toodle pip I've decided I'll do the fuse first because it's to me the fuse is probably well, there's no difference I think the wings are more straightforward than the fuse and then sometimes I think the fuse is just a bit mad in the head like you do anyway so I'm going to start with this first um, 
as like I said, you put the cling film down, cover your paper, so you don't damage it. I usually put pins in, these pins are the best in size spreads because they've got thick tops on, if you can see it. And then you put them in like just to give that a bit more sturdiness. So once you start putting your wood down, obviously you put the, the cling film over because it stops it sticking to the paper. Um, so that's basically the simplistic bit of that. Well, the other plan, I might add a little tip that I found as well because this has come in creases. What I find is if you keep these creases in, eventually it wears and it rips the plan and it's a bugger and a half like to keep them with sellotape. So I tend to roll them up like so over a rolling ball and a tube, any old tube like you get from these rolls of cling film, solar film, whatever, and then just keep them like that. Eventually the creases will come out and you've got a nicely kept plan. You know, that's just a little tip somewhere along the line. So the next stage after this, what I'll be on to is, like I said in the last video, it's all up there, ready to go, so I'm going to bring that down. So I've <coughs> got my face again. I've left myself like, this just a rough idea to keep me like in mind where it's going to go, how it will be, but I'm obviously going to start on the side of the fuse first, and that, and that's going go along, so sort out the wood that is, that's necessary for it, i.e. they're going to be for the interplane struts. Well, they're not, but the, the rings will be that are there. So that's my next stage. And uh, I'll build the bits that I can see on the plan, like there and, and that. And then once I've done the main bit here, I'll also move the plan down because you can slide the plan under the cellophane. And then uh, I'll start on the top when you make them join. Okay? Right, I'll right, right, just continue on. I've done it now. So they're all in place. Everything's exactly the same like I showed. So now, like I explained in the previous video, you uh, put the cling film in between. Put the cling film in between. So you've now got exactly two sides perfectly the same, as they say. Which you will have. Yeah, you right. Okay, you may have to take them off. They will come off eventually. And if there is bits of excess of cling film stuck to it, then you can just sand it off. It's not a big deal. But nine out of ten times it will come off reasonably easy, like so. There you go. There's one. Right, put that away. And use your pins. I mean, you can always reuse it. I might reuse it. Depends how tight I feel at the time. <laughs> And then obviously you got this piece. You can try to take this off. It saves you redoing the bottom. There you go. And there's two pieces. Dun, dun, dun. Now you can trim the edge now if you want. It really doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm not fussed, but uh, I'll probably trim them. But I mean, you know, the, bend, the back bits here. I mean, you can trim them. There's no real big deal, really. But at the moment, I'm just making sure everything's right, which it is. So you've got your down tails. That's where your tail plane is sit for the angle. And any rough bits that you can feel, you just gently sand. But there you go. Now, the reason I said I wasn't too worried about the glue being cyano is because I'm going to put plates on the inside of these, like they did on the real planes. There were metal on the real ones. Was like, but obviously, this is going to be out a little thin ply, which I'll come to you later. Right, so that's that. That's that. Right, as you can see, there's your two pieces that I've made for the fuse. How I went about that is simply enough, right, if you can focus on this, you get your pieces of length there and then pin down the top one, leave the bottom one free and then what you do is you're looking at your, your plan, I mean I'll just use an example, you can start at the beginning there and what I tend to do is, is you get your saw, you probably get a bit more understanding this way, okay so you get your saw and then you mark, look at your plan on the line there and you mark it okay now you can either if you've got a good eye on a level you can either use the saw or you can use whatever tool implement like the new fret saw i've got <laughs> right so then you chop it make some sure you get the camera lady right and that's that bit there and then obviously you make two of these so that, and i'll come to that now so you make two so you, you've got your angle you find your angle there i know the light's bad i'm sorry Mark it again, I'm not going to waste this wood. Mark it again there, and you cut it again. Obviously, it's like everything in engineering. 
you, you measure twice, cut once. So you know that's the right length there. And you, you repeat the same system all the way down to the end. And obviously underneath, you always check to see that it's in line with the bottom rod, longer on. Obviously, yeah, so make sure it's a perfect fit. Now as you've cut two of each, and I'll come to that now in a minute, you've got them all in, then what I do is, as I get a piece of, I use Sino at the moment to do this, and you screw the top, and then you pin it in. So you've put it in, to make sure it's in line with the plan, and then you pin it in, so to hold it there, follow suit all the way down. And then once you've got them all in line, you then get the bottom one, say they're all in line, obviously you've got them all, and you've doubled up on them all, if that makes sense. You've got one of exactly each, so exactly the same length for all of them, for the second side of the fuse. Once you've got them in, and then you get a pencil, and you've got them all in situ. I use a pencil like that, and I go along, and so forth. And then what I do is I turn it back, get the sino, dot a bit of sino on where you've marked it, all the way along. And then I turn it that way and slot it in. And obviously you pin them as forth like you did on the top here, all the way along. Now I usually leave the ends off the end there and cut to size afterwards. As long as this size is matching up to the plan, then that's so you're laughing. Now here's the trick, you've got it all like that and you've got it all done, you've done your inner bits and all that, which is more or less the inner bits are the same. You've got all your, like I've got on here, you basically, I wish I could have got that video because I really did do it all, the whole lot in one go. So you get your, your long pieces of strip and you obviously once they're in like that, you cut, layer it over the top like that, get it in line with the plan and mark it with the blade like so, so you go that way. And then also you look again and you mark it that way. And then you can obviously, I don't know if you can see it in a slide, but you've got your markings there. And then obviously just cut down on your plan like so, if you can show them. Cut it that way. And then you cut it that way. All right, you'll sand it either way, it doesn't matter. And then that'll fit in, slot into there. And obviously repeat the other end, doing the same. Right now, the trick here is, is once you've got it all in, uh, so I'll just quickly show you what I mean. Right, these. You take your pins out, because it's all dried up. Okay, and so for example, like I did earlier, there's your piece all set in there. Now normally, a little bit of the sino will stick to the cellophane, so I hold it in place roughly. And then what you do is, is that you've already cut all your middle bits, not these, because you do them separate, but the main longer ones and uprights. Then you get another piece of cellophane, or whatever you want to call it, and you put it over the top of there, and that, and then you repeat the process, because this time round, when you've got it on, you then pin, pin your, uh, pin it like down onto the original one you've just made, and that way, you know when you've cut your, your, your second strut, you know it's going to be exactly the same length. And that way you know, either way, you don't have to worry about following the plan then, because this is going to be identical to the side that you've already made, and that's the key of it all. And once that's all identical, you know you're not going to have any kind of warping or a chance of it warping or being a bit lopsided when you put it all upright and start putting the tops on the longer ones that way, you know. And that's basically how it works. And then, so obviously, if you look at it, you've made your bottom one, if this makes sense and you've gone along and eventually they'll end up like that so you've got them exactly the same identical both ways and then obviously the sino takes up seconds to dry and then you just gently peel it off from the sino go under your hand underneath if you need like that and then it'll take it off and then and obviously you do if you like me tight or your missus doesn't like you using her sort of thing <laughs> might keep it for another day but either way and then peel that one off and there you have your two sides because they're identical and then obviously you know where you are I've obviously trimmed these so everything fits A to B C and that's how you have it all right and now actually I suppose a good way is that I made this earlier which is in a previous video but this is this this demonstrates because that will actually have to fit in and it will fit in trust me it fits in there it actually fits into in there so you've got you have to have that in there, that gives you the width of where your fuse is going to go and that's an important piece because that strengthens it 
okay so that's how that'll work eventually right okay Those magnificent men, those magnificent men, those magnificent men in the fly.